Need something? I've already apologized. What more do you want? Unless you're looking for another nibble. No innocence. You have my word. Only villains that we need to kill anyway. After all, you know what I am now. I can fight with all my weapons. Teeth included. And if I happen to drain the occasional bandit during a fight, what's the harm? They're just as dead. As am I. I'm starting to feel a little peckish already. So it would seem. Hopefully he bumps into some knolls while stumbling around at night, and that's the last we hear from him. I didn't do anything. I was kidnapped, just like you. It seems Cazador wants me back. Cazador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate. The patriarch of his coven and a monster obsessed with power. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. It was him, I'm sure. Only he would know to send the Gur after me. It was a group of Gur that attacked me that night in Baldur's Gate. I would have died had Cazador not appeared and saved me. Maybe he was just drawn to the smell of blood. The point is, I have history with these barbarians. Cazador's sending a message. He's reminding me of his power. Even in the middle of nowhere, he can reach me. And he wants me back. Maybe he wants to make an example of me, to show what happens to runaways. Or maybe he thinks death is too good for me. Concerned? Do you know the power a vampire lord possesses? He can change shape, turn into mist, call wolves to do his bidding, shrug off blows like they're nothing. He could walk into our camp tonight and kill you with his bare hands. And you'd be lucky if death was the worst thing that happened to you. First, we have to... Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, if we kill his lackeys, he'll just send more. We just have to be vigilant, keep our wits about us, and kill any monster hunters on sight. We can't. And yet I cross the threshold like moonlight through leaves. This worm is a powerful little beast, isn't it? Oh, don't be so glum. Look at the power it's bringing us. I can walk in sunlight, trespass upon any home, manipulate minds. There isn't another vampire in the realms like me. Granted, the looming doom is an issue, but why not enjoy the benefits while we can? It's simple. 
Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. Their obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free. And the true vampire. Free and a true vampire, capable of creating my own coven. Yes. Although, I'd settle for just killing the bastard. I wouldn't be a true vampire, but I'd be free of him. Why do you insist on exhuming the past? I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now, I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. I won't lie. It's tempting. If I keep the tadpole, I risk transforming into a grotesque monster. If I lose the tadpole, Cazador has control of me, body and soul, and I return to the shadows. It's grim either way, so why not sell what's left of my soul to a devil? Better he has it than Cazador. Figuring out what's happening to us, confronting a god called the Absolute, and then finding time to kill my old master before he can control me once more? Yes, that's an option, but I wouldn't bet eternity on it. I suppose you want to hear about Cazador. I don't want to say a damned thing, but that won't do anyone any good. Casador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate, the patriarch of his coven and a monster obsessed with power. Not political power or military power, I mean power over people. The power to control them completely. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. Not him, no. A gang of thugs attacked me, angry about a ruling that I'd handed down as magistrate. They beat me to death's door when Cazador appeared. He chased them off and offered to save me, to give me eternal life. Given that my choices were eternal life or bleed to death on the street, I took him up on the offer. It was only afterwards I realized just how long eternity could be. He had me go out into Baldur's Gate to fetch him the most beautiful souls I could find. It was a fun little ritual of his. I'd bring them back, and he'd ask if I wanted to dine with him. And if I said yes, he'd serve me a dead, putrid rat. Of course, if I said no, he'd have me flayed. Hard to say which was worse. Thank you. But this isn't about sympathy. It's about knowing what we might be up against. The Mind Flayers aren't the only monsters out there. They're not even the only ones hunting us. All I'm asking is that you keep your eyes open and watch out for anything lurking in the shadows. What more could I ask? Now, is that all? I... F... Or is it an E? Is it even a letter? What damn language is this? Uh... 
Oh, it's you. Well, I'm glad you like them. A gift from Cazador, written in flesh. Apparently, it's a poem, but I've never read it. I've been tracing the scars on my back with my fingers, trying to read them by touch, but I can't. They may as well be written in Rashini. That had better be a joke. I can't read it with a mirror, and it seems I can't read it with my hands either. So, I was wondering if maybe, perhaps, you might be able to, uh... Can you read what's on my damn back? Please. Thank you. The pattern swirls before you, runes hacked crudely into his flesh. You can't read it, but you recognize the letters. Infernal, the language of the hells. And? What does it say? Tell me what it says. Infernal? Are you sure? Can you show me? What in the hells? What did he do to me? No. No, let's keep this between ourselves. At least until we know what it means. Two centuries carrying this. And I can finally see it. No. I could have missed it, of course, but I doubt it. A Cazador was only figuratively hellish. There were never any devils hanging about the crypt. Whatever he's left carved in my flesh, it's a mystery to me. Th thank you, by the way. This is... well, it's something. Given the subject matter, I probably won't. Our hero thought but a treasure ahead, did not consider the peace of the dead. Through the dark he went creeping, and awoke what was sleeping. A new grave they dug, which he himself fed. Ooh, spooky! until it was perfect. I've grown quite fond of you, you know, in my way. I thought it only fair to warn you about the dangers ahead. Oh, <laughs> we both know they are soon to be revealed. It would be pointless of me to try to bar you from entering, but I can Set the scene, as it were. Prepare you for your role. There is a stage down in the dark upon which a great drama has suspended itself in time. Its actors dwell there still, mired in the languor of their long, tired scenes. If you, however, through the dark, go creeping and awake what is sleeping, chances are many more graves than yours alone will soon be fed.
Very well. There is a creature that lurks in silence and shadow. A creature who, like me, is very much of the infernal persuasion. Should it make its way out through the very doors you are about to brazenly swing open, you'll have unleashed a pestilence upon this realm. In truth, it is carnage incarnate. So if you meet the devil of which I speak, kill it. Consider no other course of action. This creature and I go back a long way. I admit it would be in my best interest as well should it remain trapped in the dark. Or misplace its head, perhaps? What are we talking here? Lemia? Pit Fiend? Orphon? Getting warmer. Warmer. Hot. Listen here, Pipsqueak. Do not underestimate this opponent. At best, you will have the blink of an eye to strike. Strike first, strike true, defy the odds, for they are distinctly in its favor. That much I owe the bastard to concede. Wait. Before you go, I have a proposal of my own. A proposal? <laughs> if you're hoping to taste my blood, little vampling, think again. It burns hotter than wyvern whiskey. This is serious business, devil. My old... Well, a long time ago, someone carved some runes into my back. I'd rather like to know what they say. It's something of great importance to your master. But is it a love letter, a warning, or a deed of ownership? I can give you all the gory details, and I will. Once the beast that lurks below is vanquished and sent back to the hells. What's not to like? We kill some horrible beastie, and I get what I want in return. Everyone's happy. <laughs> Except the beastie. Then we have an understanding. I look forward to our next meeting. Scars often tell such wonderful stories. I think yours might be truly exquisite. well-chewed spider carcass oozes on the ground. Fresh bite marks, an old puncture wound, and a faint pulse of something not entirely natural. It is oozing, but not with blood. It's been dosed with a potion. Sulfur, decay, and a thin whiff of something unexpectedly fragrant. of rot and sour milk. Your stomach lurches, but your loins tingle. Was that arousal? Do I smell beef? In amongst the rot is an unmistakable sweetness. Succubus spittle. The meat is charmed. Marcus continues to leak.
guts cramp, your stomach churns, and your nerves burn with a pain that would almost be pleasurable were it not so savage. Honestly, what did you think was going to happen? You develop a taste for it? So much blood. What the hell's has been happening here? Ambush and a devil. I can feel it. A ghoulish display. It is clear the victim suffered greatly before dying and being put on show. What's this? Fresh entertainment. But you're too fresh for this place, aren't you? There's a whiff of the surface to you. Holy shit, an orphan. Powerful devils. I wouldn't get on their bad side without a good reason. You tiefling. You've got the stench of the hells about you. The stench of home. And a whiff of the surface besides. A servant of Zariel, if I'm not mistaken. I'd know the stench of her infernal machinery anywhere. What do you know of infernal machinery? Only what I can smell. And whatever engine burns within you is grinding to an inevitable explosion. Burning and fear. <laughs> you reek with it. There's something else, almost hidden by your fear stink. Cherries. Musk. And sulfur. Raphael! I can smell him all over you! Where is he? That perfume trickster swindled me! Trapped me! Doing. The devil told us to kill this thing, so let's stop chatting and kill it. <laughs> Bargaining, are you? A Karator warlord once tried the same. I made him watch as I ate his concubines in young. Then fashioned a codpiece from his skull. You can't help. It's not just walls that keep me here. Not the traps, the dark, or the creatures it hides. Something stronger holds me. A contract. Either I fulfill the contract, die trying, or forfeit my freedom. If I leave this place now, I'll become Raphael's slave. Swarm to the night, silence or prayers smother each right. Wonder Shah's halls, hungry to slay, leave no justice here, alive to obey, leave none to hear it, then be set free. This song is your oath, swear. Swear it to me! Well, that explains where all the dark justicias went. The final lyrics linger in your mind. There is a trick buried within them. A clause that cannot easily be fulfilled. That's it. So he's the one who slaughtered the Justicius. Can we kill him now? Because if he doesn't die, then Raphael won't tell me a damn thing about my scars.
Asking why doesn't get me paid. Hunting and killing does. Raphael mentioned something about an Asima. Meant nothing to me. I did my part. I filled these halls with ghosts. But Raphael's playing some other game. One that involves stiffing me. Anyway, enough prattle. The lyrics are clear. All who hear the song must die. Time to die. I'll have both, if I wish. I caught the scent of that bloated carcass already. He's no more alive than the Dark Justicias down here. No, he is not the answer. He is not my prey. The Merrigans? They barely have a thought to share among themselves. But they do have ears. Kill yourselves. Back to the hells with you. I still hear it. Seems your theory is wrong. Stay very still. My beauty. I still hear it! to the furnace and eat you alive. Contract be damned. Nicely played, Raphael. Bastard. Does... does that count as us killing him? That had better count. I suppose Raphael will be pleased, if nothing else. We outnumber you. Leave me be. Unworthy of dark cloak. Unworthy of dark fur. Unworthy. There's something strange about the vermin in this place. Can't put my finger on what, though. This is the path of heroes. Your feet sully it. Very well. Two legs, too familiar. What's this? For a ritual of some sort? Hmm. A final warning. Offer us peace now, or be devoured. Ordinary rat alone, but together, something more. Some remember turning away from the sun. Some remember donning a black cloak. Some remember plunging a blade into an innocent heart. But we all remember a name, Lethindor. We share who he was. shouldn't be. We should be one long dead. Instead, we are many. Scurrying. Hiding. Surviving. We are just crumbs of a life. Harmless nothings. Unless you test us. Leave us in peace.
There are treasures. Useless to us now, but once they had value, meaning, we hid them away. Untouched for a lifetime. Keep your word, and we will reveal them to you. And you better be true to your word. I am small, but we are many. Now fetch your prize and leave. Not lost your nerve, I hope. I tend to remove those from my creations. Too much fuss. I could have, but decided not to. All the better for judging your mettle. The devil is of no relevance to my goal. Besides, it seems you handled him well enough. I no longer hear that blasted singing of his. Perhaps I will seek out his carcass, should I be afforded the opportunity. Surely there are some parts I could put to use. Do you know what happens when a devil is struck down on this charming plane of existence? It returns to the hell to the very point where it last stood before venturing to whichever devil-forsaken plane it died on. In the case of our friend Yergir, the Orthon you so handily dispatched in the Temple of Shah, he manifested in my House of Hope. He returned to me chastened but intact. His wounds healed, his body restored. He thought I would dismember him. But he has his uses, so instead, I am re-educating him. We delivered the devil. Now I want what I'm owed. We had a deal. Indeed we did. I discovered all there is to know about those scars of yours. It's a rather grim tale. <laughs> Even for my tastes. I'd appreciate a little less enthusiasm when it comes to Cazador and his horrors. Oh, come, Astarian. We're about to unveil your destiny. You should be quivering in anticipation. Carved into that ivory skin of yours is one part of an infernal contract between the archdevil Mephistopheles and your former master, Kazador Zar. In full, the contract states that Kazador will be granted knowledge of an infernal ritual so vile it has never been performed. The rite of profane ascension. It promises to be a marvelous ceremony, very elaborate, incredibly ancient, and entirely diabolical. If he completes the rite, he will become a new kind of being, the Vampire Ascendant. All the strengths of his vampiric form will be amplified, and alongside them he will enjoy the luxuries of the living. The arousals and appetites of man will return to him, and unlike Astarian, he will have no need of a parasite to protect him from the sun. But the ritual has its price, as all worthwhile things do. Lord Cazador will need to sacrifice a number of souls, including all of his vampiric spawn, if he is to ascend. Imagine how he felt then, when one of those precious spawns simply disappeared into thin air. The only missing ingredient is Astarian. You are the final piece he requires to complete the ritual. Your scars bind you to it. Your soul will set off a very wave of death, bringing Cazador his twisted life. 
And that, my tragic and toothsome friend, is that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have business elsewhere. I was contemplating. It's a lot to take in. What do you think I should do? I hate how right you are. I knew he wouldn't leave me alone, even when I was just another wretched toy for him to play with. But if I'm the key to this power he craves, he'll hunt me to the ends of Faerun. I need to take the fight to him. And I need you to help me. Thank you. <laughs> Wish I could say I was surprised about Cazador's pact. Where blood, death, and betrayal parade, you can bet your ass a devil is riding Grand Marshal. We're going to keep Astarian safe. On my life, Cazador won't touch him. Full-fledged vampires are not so easily slain. Astarian's master will be no exception. Fortunate for him, slaying monstrous fanatics is a pastime of ours. I can't imagine how Astarian must be feeling. The terms of your own condemnation carved into your skin. Monsters' actions. And monsters do not deserve such power as that ritual promised. When the time comes, Astarian will have his revenge, I'm sure. And it will be richly deserved. But not yet. So, what can I do for you? Our very own vampire is the missing pawn in his master's deadly game. Now, how about we go and reverse Cazador's fortunes? It seems like Cazador used Astarian's flesh not as a canvas, but as a contract. We haven't heard the last of this, I'll wager. What can I do for you, my friend? <laughs> Cazador, sired seven spawn, me and my six brothers and sisters. He always insisted we were a family, even when he was carving scars into our flesh. I was one of his first. Some of the others came years later. He was a monster to us all but did take special pleasure in my pain. He said, my screams sounded sweetest. And now that I'm gone, I, I don't know. I pity the other six. Hello, my dear. Before anything else, I need to know where it's happening. Uh, to the public, Cazador is an ordinary noble. A little reclusive, perhaps, but just another of the great and the good of Baldur's Gate. He has a grand palace on the hills of the gate, where he hosts the city's high society. I don't know if he performed the ritual there. It feels too public. He'd risk exposure. Mephistopheles is one of the lords of the Nine Hells. Raphael is not going to let any ire be tracked back to him. Perhaps Raphael even will gain from setting us on this course, who can say? All I know is I need to unravel the secrets around Cazador's ritual. 
And I can only do that in Baldur's Gate. The gate is closed. As is Casador. Casador and his right of profane ascension. An imperious soiree, attended by devils and spawn alike. A grand ceremony to honor one exalted vampiric master. And elevate him to an unfathomable station. To place him in a position of such esteem. The world will yearn to kneel and offer their necks. Of course I envy him. Why wouldn't I? The problem with what Cazador has done is that he did it to me. If the time comes and I can stay one move ahead of him, I'll take his place before his blood can hit the floor. <laughs> What's a handful of the wretched servants? If they're anything like me when I was enslaved, they're all but begging for death anyway. After 200 years of shit, pure shit, I think I deserve something better. We'll be glorious both, you and I. You'll have your day too. Let's find out more about the ritual before we waltz into Cazador's front door. If we track down my old comrades, the other spawn, we may discover more and be finely positioned for yours truly to ascend. If we don't find my brethren, they'll find us. Likely with bared fangs. We should get to them first. Then we can make their pretty tongues talk. Unless Cazadors change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey.